Hey you folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to Let's Play Football Manager 2018! A lot of people want to see me start a series on 2018, take a look at some of the differences and maybe play at least one season of uh, something something. Now, one of the things you can't do with Football Manager is import your save from one to the other, so we will not be continuing our Air United game. That is going to be running in parallel though. Our third season as Air United is going to be running at the same time, then maybe at the end of that season and the end of this season we'll, uh, we'll ask people what they would like to see a little bit more. Um, um, try to poll and find out what kind of team should we play. Um, of course, on the internet, you get a lot of different opinions. Some people want to see a really high tier team. Some people want to see a really low tier team. All kinds of different countries are suggested. Ultimately, they decide to go ahead here with Union Royale Saint-Gilloise or something like that. Um, my, my Northern Ontario French Canadian accent is almost certainly going to be way, 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 way off of the intended pronunciation of this. So I'm just going to call them Royal Union. Their nickname is the old lady, la vieille dame. Over here, they are a professional football club from Brussels. So we're playing in Brussels, Belgium. I mean, how much more perfect can get? A manager is, of course, Quill18 from Belgium, actually born in Brussels over here. Sure, why not? Let's go for it. And we're going to be running this team. Now, what's interesting about this team is a few different things. This team has considerably higher value than Air United. As you can see here, our top valued player, uh, Thibaut Pierre over here, uh, again, probably not how his name is pronounced, but eh, is worth over a half a million euros. I set the um, the in-game um, currency symbol to euros. As far as I know, the game doesn't do any sort of currency conversion or whatever, so whether this has been euros or pound, the number would be exactly the same, which is fine. It's just a game balance thing, sure. Uh, but I figured euros would be more appropriate. So 575,000 euros for one player dramatically outstrips anything Air United has in our game. And especially if we were to load up um, Air United in this version of the save, which follows the unfortunate true history of real life Air United, which is to have fallen down to Ladsbrook League One out of the Championship League instead of in fact being promoted to the Premier like we did. Um, we could actually take a look at their players over here and check their value. Uh, their highest valued player, David Ferguson over here, who wasn't even in our team, is worth 54000 In fact, I think our one top rated player is worth more than the entire Air United squad put together. However, however, we are likely to have just as difficult of a situation as we did early on against oh, as Air United, if not even more difficult, because we are going to be playing against a much higher tier of opponents. For example, there is a minimum wage in the Belgian Pro League over here of 350 um, euros per week. And we had players that were getting paid less than that. And so that's the floor. So it goes to tell you a little something of what's going on. If we look at the, the total valuation of our... Um, where do we do it? not here it's team report comparison there we go we can see where we are in the entire league over here the gray bar is the average for the league um the yellow line is the highest in the league and the green is us so we have an average player value of 230 well below average in fact there's only two teams below us over there uh our average player wage is also we actually the lowest average player wage of any team in the league so we are definitely definitely massive underdogs this league also has a really interesting structure very i, I mean for all i know it's totally typical but it, it's very odd to me the belgian pro league b which is what we're in so there's the pro league a uh, which is you know the top tier teams 16 of them lots of very competitive very wealthy teams over here and then there's the pro league b which first of all is quite small only eight teams in total and if i've understood my sort of wikipedia browsing um you know if I've understood it properly, uh, then this is actually a relatively new structure. The uh, Belgian Pro League was recently restructured like a year or two ago or something like that. So um, kind of interesting. And yeah, this league is also in two phases. The, the Pro League B, first phase, second phase. Basically, we're going to play each team twice. So there's going to be, uh, we've got seven opponents, so we're going to play 14 games. So everyone plays everyone twice. And then the top team goes into... Um, a get qualifies for a championship, a, a tournament to get promoted. And then all the scores get reset for the second phase. You do exactly the same thing, 14 games. And again, the top team gets promoted to the, or goes into a tournament, plays, you know, the first phase versus the second phase to see who gets promoted. Um, if the same team but wins both, then they get automatically promoted in there. So a very odd structure. 
I don't know if there's any relegation rules in this. There's promotion. Are not allowed to be promoted from this division because of the first phase, but it's the championship playoff over here. There's a relegation playoff listed here. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sort of find out how this works as we go through because I'm not entirely sure. So anyway, we have very few opponents in here, which is really interesting. So we're gonna get used to seeing the same people repeatedly. That will be kind of neat. So here we are, Union SG over here. Uh, we are in fact rated seventh overall by the media over here. Probably not gonna go too well. Now, something that's very interesting with our club here is that in game it has our stadium set as the Stada Roi. That's not an L, that's an I. It's a little hard to see there, but in tooltip you can see it's clear, clearly an I. Uh, Baudouin. It's it's the the King Baudouin's stadium over here, which I believe is the international Belgian stadium with a capacity of. 50,000, which is crazy, which is not Royal Union's actual stadium. Their actual stadium has a capacity of about 5,500, but it looks like they're maybe like doing renovations or something like that in real life. And they're like borrowing this. So in the game, and, and they're playing at this stadium temporarily or something like that. In the game, they've just got this listed as our stadium here, uh, which is cool because we got lots of capacity. I mean, we won't be filling it, especially in the friendlies. We'll be lucky to have like a couple hundred people in there, but it gives us room to grow. That'll be kind of neat. Big club, lots of history. Definitely worth checking out online if you want to see where they come from. But there you go. So there's a the situation. This used to be a super, super high-end Belgian team. Definitely not in that situation anymore. Now, let's take a look at our players. We did take a look at some of the price over here. Um, but this, this is going to be kind of awkward to work with. Because here's the problem. If we sort by highest value over here and we take a look at our players, okay? So we got uh, Piero over here, who is a key player. Um, top rated player is our defensive on the right, defender on the right. Uh, so obviously, you know, not right at the front. How important is it going to be? He's not like he's got crazy crossing or anything like that. I mean, clearly he's quite good. He's going to be a very good defender, but is he going to determine games for us? I don't know. Um, uh, Lavumbo over here is on loan from Vida Club, who is... has Vida Club... Oh, in the Republic of Congo. Wow. Okay. That's a heck of a long distance to go for a loan. Um, this person is a left winger. And while it does list the striker here as a natural position, he actually has basically no strong familiarity with any of the striker type roles. So if we want to use our highest value player, um, or sorry, our second highest value player, we are clearly going to need an attacking midfielder on the left. Let's take a look at the third guy. Oh, he's he's an attacking right winger. Could maybe fake it as a striker, but that's not a strong point. He's really an attacking right winger. Okay, what about the next guy, Roman Ferber? Again, we get into the situation. Okay, he can play as a half-decent striker. He's actually got enough familiarity to play a little bit of this. But really, what he excels at is being a right attacking right winger. Okay, and note that both these guys... Ferber and uh, Tebeku are both listed as first team players that we pay a fair amount for. Ferber's actually a fair bit cheaper. Uh, good value, but a fair bit cheaper. So it's like, it feels like there's this real awkwardness. Like, okay, well, we can't play them both in the right wing position. So I guess one's going to be in the, um, is going to be in the substitute list. So much for being a first team player. I mean, I guess we can swap you to a sort of a backup role if you don't get bothered by that. All right. <clears throat> Let's go down to uh, Christoph Bertjens over here who is basically only a center attacking midfielder. That's really, again, kind of all he can do. One of our one of our star players over here with, you know, not much like, you know, not much of the stats that are hitting that golden number over here, but lots of green throughout. Like he's got a like great mental attributes almost throughout the way over here. So no one thing that's really insane, but really solid uh, to me with all these mental attributes, you know, good off the ball, decent vision, um, really decent flair. He's going to be a great person. He could play as a shadow striker is his preferred role over here. He does have a long shot of 12 and a finishing of 13. Uh, his passing's only eight. I was going to say with all these mental stats, maybe he's a really good, um, like, um, advanced playmaker. No, I mean, he's comfortable enough in the role, but his passing technical skill might hold him back. He'll, he'll look and he'll see great passing opportunities, but will he execute them? Well, we might actually just want to play him as a shadow striker. But that's awkward. We don't have a lot of flexibility in our characters, or in our characters, <laughs> in our players. Then we get to actually some of our defenders. What's interesting about this, <clears throat> Jordan Masengo, again, one of our top players, doesn't isn't comfortable playing as a pure 
midfielder. No, only as a defensive midfielder. The same thing will be true if I can remember the name of the other guy. Is it Charles? No, he's he's a he's a central defender, like a proper defender. Um, anyway, there's another like our midfielders are all like we don't like to play in the midfield midfield. We like to play as central defender. So like let's say we take a look over here at our four four two sort of clan, classic sort of thing. If we just went and quick pick, we'd see a lot of people not very comfortable with their roles. Um, the strikers could be made a little bit more comfortable by giving them. Well, no, see again here. This is Lavambu. He's not super into any of these. They may have changed the way these circles are represented. It would strike him as competent, but that's about it. Um, even here with Ferber, he's a little happier being a pure target man or a deep lying forward. I guess that would be okay. So he's tolerable in that. It's actually strange that they picked those two because we do have Diallo over here. There we go. <clears throat> who's a much better... I don't know why he wasn't auto-picked by the quick pick, but... So we do have Diallo over here, who's a very comfortable striker in a variety of different positions, so that's quite nice. But you can see our best left winger, like the wide midfielder over here, like two stars, one and a half stars in that role, and no real comfort. So clearly we're not playing anything there. Uh, Niels over here is technically okay as playing as a, um, a, a right wind, uh, midfielder over here. Um, which is really all he's comfortable playing, which is awkward because we don't seem to be able to support that. Even like the pure central midfielder, Barrelet is like a little bit better there, but not really. Burton's again, not super comfortable. Very odd. So again, also if we want to take a look at say our, well, the 4-3-3 narrow or the 4-3-2-1 if you want to call it that way. Same sort of situation. You don't really end up with people who are super comfortable. We do have a couple of people who can actually play as decent attacking midfielders in the center, but we don't have that sort of redundancy back there. So really all we end up with is, well, clearly we're going to be playing a 4-2-3-1 DM wide, which I'm not terribly excited about if I'm going to be perfectly honest. So we're going to be playing something that is very much like this. Again, we've got two good right wingers who will be fighting for the role in kind of an awkward way. And then if we're looking at, um, there we go. If we're looking at our midfielders, there's going to be defensive midfielders and then your standard sort of four back over there. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete things. So we've only got this one tactic because that's really the only thing we've got the players to support. Now, unfortunately, we also don't have any money, right? Transfer budget of, of 22000 is not much at this tier. Mostly we'd be looking at um, free agents. Unfortunately, we're actually above our wage budget at this point. So clearly what we want to do is like we're going to send everything over. Yeah, send everything over to the wage budget, first of all. Um, why can't we actually set it to zero? All right, whatever. That's fine. There we go. It's zero over there. But the thing is, we're still we're still over budget for our wage. So we can't really go shopping. What we could consider doing... Um, because I think we're in a transfer window now. Let's take a look at the schedule over here. And we'll be looking at more of the specifics of, of FM 2018 soon. And by the way, there's going to be no match this episode. It's all going to be figuring out what to do with our freaking team over here. Um, transfer window closes at midnight. So yeah, we must be in a transfer window. If it closes here. So yeah, clearly. So, I mean, we could go looking for new players. But again, our budget's kind of tight. But we might need to like offload someone super duper fast so i think what we're gonna have to do is kind of figure out our core starting 11 and our core seven subs and be brutal about cutting people um to save our budget and maybe maybe find someone who's a little bit more flexible as like a good sub kind of thing or something i, I don't know what it is um so anyway yeah that's i think that's what we're gonna kind of have to do i did make a video by the way complaining about some ui stuff i'm recording this after I, I recorded, I actually recorded a couple episodes of this Let's Play first, then made the episode complaining about UI stuff, but I've decided to restart this uh, with a little bit more understanding of the new UI. Uh, there'll still be some stuff I complain about, but maybe a little bit less obsessively and less confused. I still think the sub list is, is kind of poop. Obviously, this is the beta version, by the way. So, I mean, visual glitches and stuff, I'm going to give them a pass. Stuff like that, that's beta. But some of the UI decisions... That's not really a beta change, and it's like, there's a couple of things I'm not super keen on. Uh, I do love this overlay, though. Like, look at this. You point over areas and find out where uh, the game thinks you might have areas of weakness and so on. And I mean, yeah, clearly there's going to be maybe a general lack of stuff over here. Um, this, oh, this is where I've already tuned some of the uh, the positions. Let me go and make, I'm going to make a new choice of the 4-2-3-1 wide. 
four, two. Not narrow. What would the narrow look like? Like that. We can't really work with this, though, right? It's... Could we? Because that would be very interesting. Not, not really. Although we could maybe like force it. Virgins, I think, is going to be a great Shadow Striker. Um, fixes over here. Yeah, just a generic attacking midfielder on attack roll as opposed to support. That wouldn't be okay. We'd probably do some swaps here just to balance it out or something. That's an idea because assuming the match engine in FM 2018 is similar to the match engine in FM 2017, uh, in 17, a strong central presence in the final third is really, really, really effective. Um, and that's why I wasn't going to be playing with the, the wingers, but like, I, I would have preferred not to do this, except we're clearly going to be forced to do it. Let's go ahead and, and assume we're going to just play people in their absolute most effective roles over here uh, as much as possible. So, yeah, I'm just doing this because it reset the position so we can see what's what. Um, like, by default, in the 4-2-3-1 DM narrow, it likes to put a, a deep line forward over here in the final third. A hold up ball, get further in, forward, move into channels. Um, it is going to be attack, but I think there's going to be a lot of playmaking uh, Diallo is a little bit more comfortable playing as just a plain old vanilla attacking forward. Um, and that might be bad. So, or might not be bad. So this is going to be dribble more, get further forward, move into channels. I think it's even more aggressive. The thing is with the Shadow Striker, we might not need that. I guess one of the questions, um, where do we get the thing that shows his stat balance for this role? That was something that was super handy before. You'd be able to click and get the breakdown of relevant stats for this position. Oh, that, I did not realize that is something we are, in fact, missing here. I don't know what, what's being sorted here. Oh, important attributes, there we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right, that's fine then. Um, so the advanced forward, obviously a lot of shooting, fair amount of passing. Yeah, his dribbling... Like, he's got good stats overall, but nothing, again, that super stands out. Um, we do have the... Probably the wingers will be played on support, although they could be played on straight-out attack as well. Um, especially on the left over here, which is interesting. Would it be better to play him as a target man? I don't think so, because I think I would like to get the wings involved. I think that is the correct way to play it. Deep into space... He doesn't like to be a complete forward. Defensive forward. Pressure on defensive dime. Change down the man. Da 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 da. Create other chances. Completely sort of a support oriented. Hold up ball. Fewer risky passes. Close down more. Tackle harder. What's his tackling skill? Oh, it's only a four. No. No, 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 no. None of that. And his positioning's super goddamn weak. What the hell? <sighs> Let's just put him on aggressive. That's going to be fine. And we might want to encourage Levumbu over here to actually be on attack, because Levumbu, if you could select me, is quite good. I mean, the finishing of 14, not so good on the long shots, so he is going to have to... What's his crossing? <clears throat> it's only a 9. I'd, like, I'd actually probably like to play him as inside forward, who's like going to cut inside with the ball. I might be able to tune this, though. It's got the stay wider that we can't cancel. What if, um, if I make him just a support? Does it still have stay wider? It does. Trickerista over there. <clears throat> Rome position. Dribble more, more risky passes. It actually might almost be worth playing him in something like that. What's his dribbling ability? 14. Good speed. I actually kind of like that. I kind of like that. I think that might be right. And then we'll see about specifically training him into this role. How old is this guy? Um, Levambu. <clears throat> 28, retraining at this point, might be a little tricky. I mean, even as an advanced playmaker, like, he's not as, as comfortable in the role, but he's got all the specs for it. I think I like this. I realize you're not super comfortable, but maybe we can get it to go. This might be insane. What's his weakest of all these that we might want to work on? Something like Vision. I mean, even just getting his passing up a little bit more might be okay. But yeah, can we can we train vision? No, no, no. We might want to train up his passing a little bit more. Unhappy with the extra amount of work, really? What a whiner. What's his work rate? And it's only a 10. 
Hmm. Well, we'll see what we do about that. That might be interesting. Now, our defensive midfield was better. So clearly they're going to sit a lot further back. Um, it is interesting, though, because the place where they're sitting here, this would sort of visually be where the midfielders would sit in FM18, whereas the defensive midfielders would be a little further back. I think this is a, probably a better representation of what might happen. Now, these fellas are really interesting. Masengo would love to play as a roaming playmaker or a Segundo Volante. Both are new roles in FM8 2018. He's also be pretty happy as a defensive midfielder, deep line playmaker, or ball winning midfielder. So it doesn't mean we necessarily have to do this. Um, it's interesting that there's no specific instructions unless you put him on attack, which I don't think we would. So let's get the description of the support role over here of the Segun Segundo Volante. is different from the deep line playmaker, which again, I think would be another good role for him. Um, here as a way to connect some stuff up uh, and that the role is primarily defensive one best suited to being paired with an anchor man and is also different from the ball winning midfielder and they often run with the ball or arrive with late run into the opposition area much in the same way a box to box central midfielder does support duty he will look to support the attack while picking and choosing his opportunities to arrive late into the opposition's penalty area so he will be willing to move all the way into the box here and maybe score some touchdowns how is his finishing it's only a six he does have a 12 long shot which is interesting i don't know how much like the long shot overrides the finishing or how well they work in combo when it comes up i think what's your passing it's a 10 vision i think it probably makes more sense to play you um as probably a deep line playmaker support kind of thing your you, people are going to try to pass to you and you'll try to connect up in some fashion. Let's consider what we can do with Baherlier over here before we, we figure out the pair. Oh, see, he loves playing a deep line playmaker. Okay, so I think two doesn't make any sense. I also like the idea of having the deep line playmaker on the left. I mean, we could swap these two, but have it on the left because it'll probably help him do more connections to Lavambu over here. Um, so Masengo, we may even just want to play him as a ball winning midfielder. You know? Uh, possibly on pure defense. How's his tackling? An 8. His aggression's only 11. He is freaking fast, though! Like, this guy is so speedy. Should we just make him, like... Oh, is box-to-box -box gone? Oh, there's probably no box-to-box -box in the defensive position. Because something like that might almost make some sense. There's the roaming playmaker idea, too, to just, like, move. As opposed to, to this guy. Dribble more, roam from position... You, st uh, you know what? Maybe we'll do that. It's a more comfortable role. It's not super defensive, but it'll probably make good use of your speed, and maybe you can connect some stuff up. We'll see. Anyway, in the back over here, uh, generic uh, central defender roles here I think is going to be okay. I mean, um, we could put you on the pure s defensive center, which has more direct passes, fewer risky passes. So you're going to try to shoot a little further away, maybe. Uh, both of them have dribble less. I think I'm just going to go with the generic one. That's going to be okay. Um, the fullbacks, I think, will always have to be on a support kind of role to close it in. Um, we'll probably leave things on standard. So you can't, I think you got to close it to be able to see what the mentality is. Yeah, I don't like this UI. I think it's not good. I don't think it uses the space very well, and you can't see as many things. I think we'll just leave it on standard here. I think we will give specific team instructions. I don't like the fact that, like, so you click here, it doesn't even look like a button. You know, it's got this thing. I, I don't know. It seems very odd to me. Um... I don't know if we'll, like, specifically... I don't know if about clearing ball to the flank, so it might work, but it might be a bad idea. I think what I might do is instruct our team to play... Um, to play fairly wide. Um, it has a few implications, I think, about how they sit, but also where they try to get the passes to. I think this will encourage them to get the passes to the wingers, which I think is going to be okay. Um... I, look for underlap is new. Instructs players to hold on to ball and rather than waiting for a player to arrive from deep with an overlapping run, instead look to a team look to a teammate making a run inside and beyond them. Right, so I guess this is going to be maybe for the wingers. W the wingers will wait for the ball until the um, the striker or the attacking midfielder gets in there or something like that. That actually might be really what we're trying to encourage here. May as well try it. It's new. It'll be cool. Um, let's go ahead with the run at the fence. I think we've got an okay sort of stat for that. Um, let's see. You've got... Your speed's not brilliant, to be honest. What's your dribbling? At a 12. Uh, and your strength at a 13. You know what? You can probably do the run at. And this will affect um, Burchins a little bit less, maybe, with his shooting. 
Uh, he's got decent dribbling, not much in the way of strength. We'll see how it works to just try to dart past someone and shoot and see how it goes. Um, what else might we want to do? I hate that we have to close this and then reopen this like this. Uh, I think I still like the play out defense rather than just dumping it deep. You can see just by doing this, it has a big impact on the passing style. Basically makes you play a short, uh, short passing game from the start. We could go even more explicitly short, but I don't think that's going to be the thing. So we'll try to advance a little bit. Um, especially I don't want the goalkeeper or these guys to necessarily dump it deep as much as get it to maybe our deep line playmaker and move on from there. Uh, it might be a little crazy because maybe this would actually work better with like, you know, just dump it out to the flanks, um, especially with a little bit of the blankness here. But I think there's going to be enough roaming and that's going to be okay. So I think that's our core 11 and our plan there. Um, in terms of our subs, let me go and actually ask you to clear subs. Uh, well, you know what we might do? Like, obviously we're going to be playing all the subs here. I was going to take a moment to think about what kind of organization we might do. Obviously we need a goalkeeper. Um, is that actually... Okay, we've only got the two, so that's going to be fine. Yep. Um, and then as a backup striker, Ferber, who can also play on the right wing, is going to be an automatic. We're going to include you for something. That's that's a for sure. Uh, I'm going to put you in the seventh spot over here, which is where I tend to put the strikers in here. Um, and then the question is, do we have someone else who can play on, say, the left wing or the center? Uh, oh, that's the right. Left wing. Uh, Julian, no, you really can't. I bet you you can only really play in the middle. Okay, Julian, what the hell can you play? Oh, you're another pure right guy. You can play inside forward, which is interesting. Another first team. So we have three first team... Come on. We have three first team players on the right wing. And that's that's it? He's actually the best right winger. Hold on, what? I guess I used the quick pick here, didn't I? Um, Tactics. So instead of... Beku over here. Okay, he's the best in a pure winger role. I see. But that depth thing is sorted based on their best role, which in this case would be an inside forward. So yeah, he's going to try to cut in with the ball. Um, and cross left often. So he's not about running down the, the side and then crossing. He, he's about moving in with the ball. Now, that's very interesting. Um, okay, team report on the left. Da Silva, can you do something different? I mean, you're only a half a star behind Lavumbu. Da Silva. No, it would be a straight-up support winger, which Lavumbu is more than happy to play. Can you play any other roles with any degree of comfort? You're actually fairly comfortable in the middle as possibly our second uh, Shadow Striker. Who else might be willing to do a Shadow Striker? Oh, Fixels, who's quite good, actually. So, yes, hold on. We're going to put Matthias Fixels in this role. Uh, he can only play in the center, but he's he's probably a fair bit better. We might still want to grab the Silva in here. So, as a left wing or center replacement. He can also play a pure midfielder, apparently. I don't know how comfortable he is in there. Not terribly so, although it's certainly possible. Um, and then we need some defender replacements over here. Um, Kenneth might be a good choice, especially since he can also play a defensive midfielder role. What about on the fullbacks? Um, El Bahu, El Bahuhi over here. And on the left, Anas, who can play... Not a whole lot of variety. Yeah, we don't, we're not playing that role. He's basically strictly on that left wing. So the question is, of the people that are left, like here we got... Yeah, another winger, of course. He can play a lot. He's got some flexibility here. I'm actually starting to wonder if they're just rating these roles a lot more aggressively than before. Maybe, like, before we would have considered playing them a lot more. Um, but look, it's like striker, striker, attacking midfielder, attacking midfielder. <sighs> We've got a couple of defenders. Do we have anyone else who can play defensive midfielder that we haven't picked up there? 
um, Barley, he's got in there, and Hudrit. I think we've got both of them listed. So we've got our backups there. Yeah. Mm. Niels, Niels, maybe. Uh, this Pierre guy, I don't think we're using him, are we? Or is he already in... Oh, he's playing the on the on the right. Yeah. Martins, can you play anywhere else other than the right? Not really, but you're half decent, so maybe we'll grab you. Okay, there we go. So that might be it's possible. I'm gonna do a little save of this. Um A. This might be our standard group of people, which might make these people a little less required. Uh Dylan here is on loan from someone. We're paying him for a bit. He doesn't have a ton of value. Like, I assume that's showing us how much we're paying. We could just cancel that. Uh, Yeah, we pay him flat out. We don't pay him, like, per, per anything special. Um, we could cut him off. What else? Like, he's not even that comfortable in any of the right-wing roles. His value is so insane. Uh, he's got a lot of potential. And the thing is, what I'm wondering, we don't pay him that much. He's a hot prospect, though. But what I'm wondering is, should we go and see... Because he's going to be great later, but we don't need a great later. We need a, we need money now. He's not that expensive here, but at least we could get a lot of value out of him. I'm thinking about um, putting him on the transfer list. You don't necessarily need to put him on the unwanted uh, we could consider, we could consider, oh, um, loaning him away as well. I'll put him on the loan status. It would have to be a loan that pays for all of him, but that might be okay. Uh, who else we've got over here? Anas over here who can play a decent left wing and has like no value whatsoever. He's still pretty young, though. His ooh, his natural stats aren't that great. His potential ability, they consider him to be, like, good potential. Well, again, I think I'm going to go ahead and list him. And we'll see. This is a good chance, like, we're going to upset some people. But we'll see how it goes. Um, and then uh, Tabuke, Tabuku over here. Again, is sort of another strict right winger. Good value. Um, we are going to be looking to transfer list you away, not necessarily on loan. Just in the interest of trying to save a few bucks. I should do some team meetings and things like that. Um, let's, let's do it real quick. We're going to send the meeting over here, Le Vietnam, welcome to the club. We're going to get the history knowledge, no philosophies. I don't think I want any philosophies right now, so let's do that. Um, we'll meet the journalists, because if we don't, they're unhappy. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So now we're talking to the assistant manager. Um... Inter-squad friendly, sure, more friendly is more better. Um, also, a written report regarding the team. Yes, please send me a written report. Uh, sure, we'll meet the staff, but I'll just say thanks because we're not looking to necessarily change any of the um, responsibilities, so I should have them set. That concludes that. I will note in the staff, I took a look at this earlier, and this is insane. We have no scouts. Like, we're broke, and that's without staff. We have no general coaches. Like, if you look at our training over here, look at our coach situation. We have a fitness coach. It's not bad. That's good. Goalkeeping coach, which honestly doesn't seem to be that great. One and a half stars over here. Uh, our assistant manager is trying to take a couple of the jobs over here for attacking and shooting. And then I'm working a bunch of other things at about two stars. We need more dedicated coaching. Um, it's crazy that we have a dedicated co uh, goalkeeping coach, and he's terrible. Um, I think what I might do, since our assistant manager is clearly not very good at coaching, we might prioritize getting a coach to handle attacking and shooting kind of stuff. Uh, so we need someone with a high attacking skill and high technical and or tactical over here. And I can't remember, I may have, because uh, I may have already put out a request or an offer, and I don't remember if there was a place to check that. Um, transfer center? Um... I don't remember if I put an offer out already or if it would show up over here. We'll see. I'll do some scouting for a coach because we clearly need something going on here. Uh, not a great deal of quality updates on the first team. Yeah, there's a lot of problem. We're over budget. 
Uh, we don't have any left, left back depth. It's pretty bad. Like, there's so many. Pro this is a broken, broken team. Broken, broken team. Um, sure, free kicks will uh, will tune some of this stuff. Have the tactics change. I still can't believe there's not, a, like, an auto tactics. Like, this is the simplest thing. I mean, I guess if you don't assign anyone to the tactics. Ooh, there's more stuff. Direct free kick, indirect free kick. Why deep? Oh, there's a lot more stuff over here. I think if you don't send anyone, it will try to take the person with the best stats. Uh, and that'll only be a problem if, like, it's also someone who should maybe, you know, be in the penalty box to be ready to, like, take a hit or something. But we'll see. Uh, welcome from the director of football. Excellent. Yeah, we have, like, we have a scouting budget. I don't remember there being a scouting budget before. Is that? That must be new overall. Unless it's, you know, specific to this team. But I don't think so. Um... So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. We do have some suggestions over here. I hate that you can't just get a straight-up list. Like, you acknowledge or discard. You can add to short lists and things. I will, um... I think I'm just going to go ahead and just acknowledge that note over there. I guess there was only the one. Sometimes there's a bunch of them. And we'll come back to it. We do have the scouting focus over here. You know, um, general short-term. Like, scout people within scouting range. You know, do we want younger or experienced or this or that? Like, what are we looking for at this time? Availability, typical. Like, that's kind of interesting. Who's responsible for the scouting? Well, right now, we don't have a, had a chief scout, so I guess so. We don't have a recruitment team. Um, so, you know, that's that's a thing. Uh, recruitment team, yeah. Needs a chief scout. I agree we do need a chief scout. I'll be hunting around for one. Um, the way I'll do it is staff, staff search. Um, pick either coaching ability or mental ability, depending on what you're looking for. So here I'm going to want to find, uh, someone with the highest possible judge ability and judge potential for the scouting. Um, you can edit your search over here. There you go. And say, listen, I'm specifically looking for someone interested in becoming a cheap scout. And then, okay. I mean, it filters based on people who would maybe take it. Um, you can also take a look at the um, the preference. I don't know if Chief Scout ever comes up. I think just Scout. So there's Patrick Busby over here, for example. Um, could we go and approach you to sign over here? Uh, you charge a fair bit, but it might work out. Um, that's looking for Scout directly. So again, I'll, I'll I'll be doing this sort of thing to to hunt around here to fill out. I'm gonna get a Chief Scout, a Scout. I also will be looking for a general coach with a really high attacking slash technical slash something uh, tactics value uh, so that hopefully we can train up our attackers a little bit better and see what we can do there. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you guys next time.